Today our subject is longitude. Since about the mid-1800s, when mathematicians developed a way of charting out every point on the face of planet Earth, mankind has lived with longitude and latitude. This talk is about longitude, lines of longitude that extend from the North Pole to the South Pole. I think of the word long to describe the lines of longitude as the section marks appear on this orange from top to bottom. All the section marks are approximately the same length on an orange, all extend from, let's call it, the North Pole to the South Pole on the orange. The contrast lines of latitude on a planet Earth are of different, different lengths. The longest at the equator and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter as you go to the North and South Poles. I don't plan to talk about latitude anymore today. Uh, we'd like to do that in another session. Lines of longitude are also called meridians, and the zero meridian passes through the Royal Observatory at Greenwich, England, as defined by astronomers in London in 1851. The zero meridian is called the prime meridian. From there, meridians start in both an easterly and westerly direction and divide the world, the Earth, into eastern and western hemispheres, with 180 degrees west and 180 degrees east meridians. Just for fun, let's stop, step off the planet Earth and watch it rotate on its daily routine. As you know, this takes 24 hours. The planet Earth, essentially being a sphere, can be divided into 360 degrees around the equator. Let's use some simple math. The Earth rotates at 360 degrees over 24 hours, or 15 degrees per hour. That number is key to finding your longitude. Let's travel the Earth a bit and see what the longitude values are. First of all, let's find London over here, and let's go west from there. We find that Madrid, Spain is three degrees west longitude. Reykjavik, Iceland, halfway across the Atlantic, is 58 degrees west longitude. And Chicago is 87 degrees west longitude. Now let's go east. Berlin, Germany is at 25 degrees east longitude. Rome at the east end of the Mediterranean Sea is 27 degrees east longitude. And way over here, Beijing, China is at 116 degrees east longitude. How did a traveler in past days know what time it was locally? One method is to note when the sun is directly overhead. That's local noon. You know from the observation that it is 12 o'clock noon where you are. Imagine you could find yourself slightly west of Greenwich and with the sun directly overhead, your sun time is one hour later than Greenwich Mean Time. That means you are at the 15th west meridian because the Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour. Dublin, Ireland happens to be at that 15th meridian. As another scenario, imagine that you are Louis, Juliet, or Father Marquette paddling canoes in 1673 with the hope that the passage to China is just around the next bend in the river. We obtained a copy of a map dated 1650 uh, from the New York Public Library, which shows that the concept of the central part of North America was very, very vague at that time. While it may seem strange, one of the key elements of determining your longitude is to know the time of day in Greenwich, England. A precision clock called a chronometer 
was typically carried by ship captains and navigators to keep informed as to the time of day in Greenwich, England. So if you know it's high noon where you are, and the time in Greenwich is, is three hours different, then your longitude is 45 degrees, three times 15 per hour, 45 degrees from the prime meridian. By the way, that there's no need to be moving if you stay where you are and take a reading on another sunny day, you will obtain exactly the same reading. I hope this helped you understand how early explorers found their position on the planet.